Hello everyone, this is Natnar signing back in and welcome back to Jake Hunter. We just got in a present from Desano and I still don't know what it is. It's a pile of newspaper apparently. I dug through the newspapers until there's a bottom side. This is Glen Morangi. Glen what? Hmm, <laughs> my favorite. Guy knows his stuff. I'll give him that. I lovingly pulled the bottle out of the box. Damn, it was such it's just a nice old bottle too. I want a juice. <laughs> Poor kid. Take good care of my horsey. Uh, that doesn't sound right. That doesn't sound right. It made out to be. It's the only person who would confirm it was some dame called Yoshi, you know. Oh man. Okay, we take the doggy. Lenny. Lenny! Not you. I practically got about it when it had been going on, but Tim told me that Johnny used to be the police dog. Didn't look much like a cop anymore, but the word has his day that his day he'd been that in his day he had been a highly decorated dog. I must have caught his fair share of the criminals, but his sense of smell and his training would have been quite an adversary. Couldn't help but wonder if he still had even a fraction of an old police dog left. Well, they figured it couldn't hurt to see. Give you. <clears throat> the mutt gave the matchbook a good couple of sniffs and laboriously climbed to his feet. Maybe it was trying to be good for something after all. Sniffing and coughing, Lenny staggered toward the door. Grabbing my coat and giving Kurt a quick goodbye, I followed him. Oh, come on, don't give the key, then leave the Kurt behind. Suddenly, Lenny disappeared into the crowd, and not long after, I heard a woman begin to scream. What's this? I pushed my way through the crowd to see Lenny sniffing at a rather distraught woman. Oh my god, what are you? <clears throat> what? What kind of this? What the? What did this dog shoe go away? Oh my god. Was she Yoshi Uno? Oh my god, you have a weird head. I've never seen a dame with a head like that. Hey. This, this Hannah hadn't been kidding me. What is there my head for? You're the owner of this dog, aren't you? Do something. Ah, sorry. Lenny, that's enough. Thanks. His duty discharged, then he collapsed onto the sidewalk and promptly began to snore. Yoshi! Yoshi. Sounds like Yoshi. In Tagalog, Yoshi means smoke or a cigarette like that. You must be Yoshi Uno, right? I've been looking for you, ma'am. <coughs> for me? You? Don't be sounding like that Chinese guy now. Yes. Do I know you from somewhere? Oh, I cannot speak Japanese. I sure hope so. You're a real looker. No, I don't know you! Hmm, I usually don't forget someone. Ah, no, you don't! I usually don't forget handsome men. <coughs> oh, you must be one of my customers at the bar. Your name is, your name is. My name is Jake Hunter. Uh, I've never seen been to your bar. Jake! Now remember, you're Jackie! Silly me, how could I forget you? Oh, you really have to forgive me. He was having a back and only this guy was hearty. That could have been worse. I figured that I might play along. She might be more than willing to talk if she thought we were friends or whatever she thought we were. Nobuko, of course I know her. Oh, gosh, I didn't know you were after Nobuko. No, I wasn't! Although I should tell you, Nobuko quit long time ago and got married. She got married to a rich man. She did pretty well for a widowed nerd brother. Have you seen a buko lately? Oh god! You haven't given up on a buko, have you, Dicky? No! You can't fool around with married woman, you bad boy! Of course I heard things haven't been so great, sir, lately, but... Haven't been so great! With husband? Ah! Uh -uh. It's not like they're breaking up on anything! He just never came home. Oh no, you don't! Don't you see how a wife could be get, uh, get a little worried? And... Uh, 
Oh, never mind. I really shouldn't say anything. Not even to you, Jakey. Ha ha ha. What the hell? Nabuka has been coming to my bar a lot when her husband's at home. I hear he's quite a scary man. I wonder if he could be okay with that. Uh, doing that. No, I certainly can't blame her. She must be feeling, feeling lonely. Oh, my. That was not a long time ago. That was long ago. Jesus. Ah! Yes, no Coco came to the bar. I remember it because it was the day my bar just got shut down. Remember correctly, she showed up at the taxi around 11.30. Exact time. Around 11.30. How long does she, was she at your place? Oh gosh, until 4 or so? I think she was there until we closed up. The son who told me you asked him for a loan. Oh my! I didn't know you knew Dawn. The Dawn! Your forehead is as wide as your circle of friends. Don't judge my forehead! Look at your head! Did you ask anyone else say Nabuko for a loan? Oh yes, I did! He's a rich lady now, you know. Listen to this. She only gave me two thousand dollars. Two grand! Yes, two thousand dollars. It costs a lot more than that to open a bar. Like a hundred grand more. But she told me that was the best she could do. What do you think that means? Did the man of the house have his lady on some kind of allowance? Were they tight on cash? It seems a little odd that someone living in such a nice house would, wouldn't be able to pony up a little more dough for a friend's business. Actually, she only gave me the money two days ago. The night she came to visit me at the bar. Oh, I didn't realize how late it was. If you excuse me, I gotta get going. Thank you. Oh, shoot. Come back. I'm gonna have a new bar. I promise you'll have a great time. Oh, no, you don't. You're going to go and disappear across the street. Hmm. We should get back to the office. Good work, Lenny. Lenny and I picked ourselves up and began the long, hot trek back to the office. Yeah, he's finally back. You guys are late. Sorry, right, kid. You okay, you on? Uh-huh. I'm fine. Good. Ah, what am I doing? <coughs> Still wasn't used to coming home to a kid. It's like, oh, hi, son, I'm back. Nope, not yet. What me going to do? Me think. A little cigarette. There's only one person could have stolen the painting. Okay. I gotta go. Not you! Oh, I need to go, I need to go, I need to go. Oh, I need to go. I took a, I took the last pull from my cigarette and crushed it under my foot as I wrapped it up. I still had half a day before Nobuko's deadline expired. I was pretty sure I'd be able to make it. I have to admit, there were still a few mysteries left on top. I identified the culprit and I was hoping the confession would tie up the rest of the loose ends. Of course, one of those loose ends was the location of the painting. Okay. What did I want to do? I want to get in the house. I love by having another cigarette, thought better of it, and stepped through the door. There's a whole lot of living going on in the living room. I was the only person there. Hmm. Before long, the book was stood before me. Nothing the matter. Did you find out something about the painting? Yeah, I found out about you! Why do you call me in here? I got put the other two hands in the painting has been taken out of the house. I want that to do the other shadow guy. Hello? No, 
Oh no. Ooh, I really don't know. I know what I'm doing, but I don't know what I, I need to do. Oops. Oh no. Where is it? Not that one. one. Just wait. What happened to the battery? Huh? Wait. Why is there a golden egg in the battery? Why Pocoyo? I don't have Pocoyo. <clears throat> Hold on. You're tiny. Huh? Ah, 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 ah. Don't do that. And and where is that piece of wood? Dang it. What are you doing? Don't do that to the fork. Uh. Never mind. Maybe we should call out someone else. Ah, shut up. No, oh, wait. Okay, okay. What do you want? Reveal. Three pieces that are removed. Jenny? Yoshi? Piece of wood. Well, that's an interesting idea, but it just sounds like an idea to me. Piece of wood is from the frame of the stolen painting. It's uh, in Central Park. That means the painting was in Central Park too, so whatever left the house that night was probably stolen. And whoever it is was probably used Jenny's scooter to get to the park or wherever they were going. Jenny says both you and Nuboku were not home that night, although she was. I have my reasons for believing her. As for Nuboku's alibi, she was somewhere else while the scooter was being used. Somewhere else? Huh. Really? I see. The book went out again. Oh, well, you're right. I guess that just leaves me. Yeah. Did I get anything wrong? Did I cover all the angles? No. Look, I... No! You can't do this! Jenny? Jenny was in the room, her eyes frightened by the tournament. Mr. Hunter! Can't be right. Edward didn't steal the painting. Jenny? You never do anything like that. But Edward, you didn't do it. Tell him! <coughs> Did 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 are you gonna get in trouble? I'm sorry, Jenny. I'm the one who sold the painting. God dang it. It's a shady thing to do, I know. Is it true, Edward? You really hate father. Father? Just as I opened my mouth to ask, Jenny was about what you meant. I heard Nabuko's voice from the doorway. I knew it, I knew it was you. Mother? Edward? I won't report this to please. Our family doesn't need the scandal that would cause. I will tell you far. Fine, do whatever you want. 
I'll return the painting. Sorry you had to waste your time with us, Hunter. You can pick up the painting from the antique shop in the city called Borghizio. They've been looking for a buyer. Oh, yeah. I'll ask them to give you a call later. I got one last question for you, Edward. What is it? <clears throat> why do you steal the painting? For money, of course. When why? Why didn't I take one of the more valuable paintings? Eh, no big secret there. I took it because it was my father's favorite. H how dare you? How could you do this to your father? You're the lowest of the low. Eh, maybe, but it doesn't get much lower than with my father. You see, soon enough. What's that supposed to mean? Figure it out yourself. He shrugged and headed towards the door. Oh god. I'm back here. I'm not done with you yet. Okay. Because the yelling echoed off the walls. But what filled my ears was Jenny's soft sobs. It hadn't really mattered who taken the painting. Chances are it would have ended about the same regardless of who done it. Can always feel good after a case. Sometimes all I have to do is open up to a whole new can of worms. <clears throat> It looked like I opened this one up pretty wide. I felt a little guilty as I left the happen house. I got to walk away from them and their problems, but they were stuck with each other. Oh goodness, that turns out like a tough case. Yeah, yeah. Well, it took me a lot longer than I need have liked, but that was for the mystery of the stolen painting. So you saw you after that at the Borgia Street tea shop. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he told me that he solved the Hamlin's robbery case. Hmm, that reminds me. <clears throat> Something of the owner of the antique shop said, um... I remember. Jake, my boy, you haven't told me about Mrs. S Miss, uh, Mrs. Snyder and Kurt. You said you had to explain, but you haven't explained anything. Come on, man. I was just telling you about how you and I end up both at this antique shop. <clears throat> yeah, but I was all rubbish. I don't see any of how that could do with the young man. Maybe I should explain that, Mr. Kingsley. Edward Hablin didn't have anything to do with Miss Snyder's experience. They both visited the antique shop that day, but they didn't meet one another. I'm afraid I'll need to take a bit of detour myself to explain all this. Mm -hmm. I can't take much more of this here. Only I want to get cut out. We're not on a real case. We're just sitting down having a tap of tea. What are you doing? That's scary. Alright, alright, Mr. King. Ah, shite. Alright, Mr. Kingsley, I'll try my best and make this quick. You remember what's happening with my case, right? Oh, goodness. Oh, well. I believe you were hunting for Kurt's mother. You're finally getting a lead on her whereabouts. Hey! Very good, Mr. Kingsley. The information I'd encountered at the antique shop had given me my first good lead. Just as I was about to. Hey, there, y'all! Just as I was about to. Huh? Oh, come on! <clears throat> Why are you there also? Sorry, fellas. Hope you haven't been waiting too long. I got held up by the chief. Oh? King, you old dog, what are you doing here? <clears throat> I could just ask... Well, I could just as well ask you the same question. Ah, well. I'm just here to meet you and Jake. You got somewhere to be. <clears throat> going somewhere? <laughs> yes. What are going on? Are you going to go? Are you guys going out to have fun without me? Well, I never. <laughs> oh come on, Nick King, don't blow us gasket. We're just going about going to meet um, Mr. Lewis, huh? I would appreciate it if you don't reveal too much. We're just be telling him the story now. Oh, I see, I see. All right, all right. What are you guys smiling for? Oh, you got to see the dog and the kid. Oh, come on, come on, please. I'm sorry. <coughs> <laughs> my sister walking in the background across the room going hmm, my sister weird talking to herself in front of the computer again and smiling confirms her predictability <laughs> you have to reheat that in the oven without burning it <laughs> I know your tactics you might accidentally burn that pizza you have to actually watch there with the pizza. <clears throat> Sorry to have interrupted y'all. You just keep going and pretending I'm not here. <laughs> Come on! Go ahead, you. Of course, Mr. Kingsley. I got on the bus and headed for Motley in an attempt to trace Mrs. Siders. Put them. Come on, this is the music! 
Where were you gonna buy the dust station? And now with over a year ago. You can just go by buy the dust station. We already know it's over a year ago. That was when I have a beautiful haircut. I walked about a hundred yards from the bus stop. When I noticed a sign like this kind you'd see at the construction site. I don't know why, but something about it gave me a bad faith. <clears throat> Required for a bus route. Padded on the concrete were some red dots that look like blood. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. <clears throat> I put up, especially this part. There had been a purse snatching three days ago. Oh, no! It would have been right around the same time Mrs. Snyder had left the antique shop for Motley. She been involved in the incident? Oh, come on! Oh my god, who are you? I turned to see a woman standing behind me. Are you the woman I'm looking for? Like a businesswoman. Is she on the way to work? <clears throat> Actually, I, uh, I saw it when it happened. You saw it? Yeah, although it was just a little ways away. I, some kid on the bike grabbed some poor woman's purse. It was terrible. wonder what happened to that woman. She looked like she was probably in her late 20s. She took quite a hit to the head. They had to take her to the hospital. HER HEAD! Yes! She didn't let go of her purse, so the man on the bike threw her off. He drove really fast on his motorcycle and threw her into the ground. She had in the curb. Oh no. Yeah, the woman who had been attacked was Miss was Miss Snyder. Everything fit. Her son disappearance, the man in the apartment with her key. Yeah, the man I'd seen was the one who'd taken her purse. <clears throat> they remember anything about the person on the bike. Hmm. They were wearing a helmet, so I can see their paces, but I'm sure it was a man. My body shape looked like a young man's. Did you notice anything else? Anything all of the time? Let me think. Hmm. Ah well, there was this one thing. What the? What? The man stopped the bike right after the lady hit the curb, then ran up to that bush and over there and did something. The painting. It was just lying in the street, but he didn't even look at her. Couldn't really tell what he was doing over by the bush. I was too far away. What did he do after that? He jumped back on his bike and took off. I think he heard sirens in the distance. The story was strange. Why did the criminal stop to look around the bush? Maybe he left something. He could have accidentally thrown something into the bush when he was sh when he shoved the man away. A woman away. He would have stopped to get it back. Perhaps he'd also been at Miss Snyder's apartment trying to find s whatever he'd been dropping. <clears throat> Did you say anything near the bush? I don't think so. I don't think really the police looked around the bush much either. Oh wait, now that I think about it, when he shoved the woman away, I think I heard something fall into the bush. Really? Yeah, yes. Did you tell the police about this? Uh, I guess I haven't told them yet. Was it possible? Had the death left something behind that the police had missed? If he had, it was still there somewhere in the bush. Oh, look at the time. Excuse me, I have to get going. Of course, sorry for taking up so much of your time. Thank you so much, man. It was no trouble. Have a nice day. Give me a warm smile and walk toward the train. Let's go! Go to the bush! The bush, the bush, the bush! <clears throat> Bottom. Touch down to get a good look at the other side of it. Find anything interesting? Okay, let's just look at the top. Look up at the tree. Everything belongs in the top of the tree. belonging been thrown up into the tree when she was attacked. I can see the tree very well from the street. I could expect it as best I could. There was nothing there. I'm sure the criminal had dropped something next to the bush. Or something already taken it. At that time, I figured I should make sure I looked at everything closely. How about the board? Hmm. 
Have it around. Over the street. Hmm. Enter bush. I grimace and push myself into the bush. I try to get a good look at the branches above me as I move closer towards the tree in the back. I was about to give up when... A cellophon! Okay... The power was on but the battery still had a few bars left. Oh, that's a good cell phone! These kinds of phones would last for days! And they would still have 1% power. I miss old phones like these. <clears throat> in other words, the phone hadn't been in the tree for that long. I checked the phone's address. I didn't, who know the, I didn't know who the owner was, but I certainly wasn't Miss Snyder. Now, there had to be a way to figure out who the owner of the phone I'd found. <clears throat> Cellophone. Oh, come on. Think. Think, woman. I ran my fingers through my hair. My beautiful hair! I knew what I had to do. What did I have to do? Why is that face so weird? The police would be able to figure out who the owner of the cell phone was. Mr. Lewis had told me he was in charge of a purse snatching case. Maybe they were related. I figured I might be able to get some information out of it. We took off in the direction of the police station. I arrived at the reception desk in the lobby of the Spicio police station. There's even more crowded than usual. I'd like to see Detective Lewis, please. Do you have an appointment? An appointment? No. no. I'm afraid I can't let you through. We're far too busy right now to deal with you. Please, please, wait. It's an urgent matter. You think I haven't already heard that 50 times today? I don't think so. Can you step aside, please? There are other people in line, you know. I could understand he was a lot of pressure, but there's still no excuse for his rudeness. So I asked the receptionist to give Luke. Look who's back. Okay, I have a whole lot to do right now. I don't have time to listen to your problems. Oh, shh. So self-centered. Excuse me! Thomas up without getting angry wouldn't solve anything. I just put up with this. I then I saw. I will kill him in the neck. Okay, I get angry. And I fear my emotions may have gotten the better of me for a short time. Explain to the young man with careful pointed words why it was most important that I speak to Mr. Lewis. I suggest that perhaps his behavior was reinforcing the reinforcing the, it was reinforcing negative stereotypes of police cruelty, sexism and general sep oh god. I may have also called into the question of the validity of his percentage. It might also be possible though I question the nature of his relationship with his mother. And I could have, in the heat of the moment, compared him to animal leavings. Oh god. It wasn't that fair I finished that. I noticed that an eerie silence had fallen over the station of me. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <coughs> the station makes a god pale. Oh god, I swear. As you have been a little harsh, my little girl angel. Ah, I'm terribly sorry, ma'am. Uh, contact the tip, this Lewis immediately. My approach may have been unorthodox, but it appeared to have gotten results. It wasn't long before I saw Mr. Lewis striding into the lobby. <coughs> <coughs> oh, man. <laughs> Hello, Yulia. The guy at the stage looked frightened. Did I miss anything? Oh, you missed the show. Ah, uh, no, I don't think so. Anyway, Mr. Lewis, can I ask you a few questions? You're working on a purse snatching case right now, aren't you? Yep, but what about it? Did the incident you're investigating case three years ago? How did you know that? Was that about what you wanted to ask me about? Yes, I think your case might have something to do with Miss Snyder. Kyla Snyder? Hmm, alright. I'll tell you what I can. <coughs> Unfortunately, we know as much as about, know as much about the, her as you do, eh? We don't have the name or address or nothing. What do you mean? It's like something out of a soap opera, but the doc tells us she has- OH NO! You- 
No, no, no. Amnesia! We figured it was probably caused by the blow to the head. She doesn't remember anything about the attack or even about herself. In fact, she was in the coma until this morning. It's possible she just uh, she's just recovering from coma and her memory will come back. But since her purse was stolen, unless she does start remembering things, we don't have any way to identify her. In this case, it's going to be real dozy. <clears throat> what about a criminal? Are you close to catching him? Really burns me up to admit it, but they are at Sanso. The motorcycle used the attack that was stolen to begin with, and we've got almost no other information on the perk. Is that right? You think the lady who got her report stolen is Kyle Snyder? I think it's possible. I told Mr. Lewis what I learned so far about Miss Snyder's activities that they should appear. I see. Do you want to meet her? Uh, yes. Alright, I'll walk to the station. She's in West Central right now. You should be able to get over and pay her to visit. Alright, I'm gonna go to the hospital and... Just a moment, Lewis! There's something I need you to give you first. Yeah. <coughs> you, did you take a look at this, Mr. Lewis? I found it stuck in some bushes near the crime scene. Bushes? Why the heck with a cell phone? I explained how I found the cell phone and my speculation about what had taken place. Oh, what? Then the cell phone is... Yes, this could belong to the robber. Alright, I should be able to trace the owner. <coughs> it might lead us to our robber. I gave the cell phone to Mr. Lewis. I'll talk to you later, you are. No, don't remove, don't remove. Oh, you want the music? Just stop by my office when you're done at the hospital. Absolutely, I'll be making sure to keep you in touch in the loop with my beautiful flailing hair. Hey, you're a little too good to be just an assistant. Oh, shush. <coughs> I'm counting on you. He gave me a half wave, half salute. No, no, I'm sweating. Excuse himself from the room. And I look at this guy now. <laughs> good for you. <coughs> Now where am I going? Hospital. E. I headed toward the West Central Office. Nurse had taken me to a small quiet room in the calm wing of the hospital. I think it's your mother. Laying on the bed was a woman with a head wrapped in bandages. Was she Mrs. Snyder? She did look a little bit like Kurt, but was it just my imagination? My name is Julia Marks. Thank you so much for ta taking some time to talk to me. <laughs> no, don't mention it. I'm really feeling just fine. Is there something you wanted to ask me about? Yeah. I'm sorry, but I'm still, um... Okay. She shook her head. I can only imagine what amnesia would be like. Hi, last night. I'm sorry, that doesn't sound good. How about Kurt? Kurt! I'm sorry, it doesn't ring a bell. I was getting nowhere asking her questions. She hadn't been positively identified as Tyler Snyder, so there was a chance I was barking at the wrong tree. Hmm. Maybe we should get the kid. I don't think I was much help. Anyway, you did the best you could. Would you mind if I came by sometime again? Oh, it would be great to see you again. I, I don't get visitors. Of course! <coughs> I left the hospital room and began my trip back to the office. Hey, it's it. I've been waiting for you. Heard ran up to me as I entered the office. Happy as ever. How are you feeling, Kurt? I'm fine. I really agree, Gate. Is that is certainly cheaper. Hi, Lenny. Remind me of someone. Okay. Russ said there is no way to predict when he might have another time. Hmm. I was able to play hop the path. Okay, I'll go back to the station. And left for the office. Your timing wouldn't be better. Why 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 why? No sooner had I entered the police station, I stopped by Detective Lewis. Did something happened. <clears throat> 
Oh, you better believe something happened. Wait, he's here, the owner of the cell phone. Really? He agreed to come here as a primary witness. I'm gonna need you to identify the guy. See if this is the same man that you saw at Kyla Snyder's apartment. Of course. <clears throat> I followed Mr. Lewis to the interrogation room. You are the guy! A shifty gentleman in wrinkled clothes was sitting in a chair inside the room. Now comes Schneider. 21 years old, unemployed, he's our primary witness. A mop of brown hair and Yankee nod. It was him. The man I seen at Miss Snyder's apartment. Lewis, he's the guy. He's at Snyder's apartment. Alright. Breaking and entering, Malcolm. That's bad news for you. But I didn't steal anything. Tell it to the judge. Now, that we get a witness, I'm going to nail your ass in the wall. I didn't do it! Looked like he wasn't going to crack until we presented him with something refutable. Hmm. What's irrefutable? <clears throat> I hope it's not more than three things, please. You saw Mrs. Miss Nida's purse, and I can prove it. You're bluffing. You got nothing. Oh, I do, Mr. Schneider. I have two things. In fact, to begin with, I got a um. <clears throat> key. Of course, I'm. Uh, Oh, nah. Well, the conclusion seems pretty obvious to me. Arg. Come on now. Oh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Okay, I had the key, but... Yeah, I missed the key. And that itself should be proof enough that you stole her purse. Your cell phone was found at the scene of the attack with a good portion of the battery left. That means you were there and recently. And perhaps I missed something. Have I misinterpreted the evidence? <sighs> Speak up. What's the matter? I haven't figured out a way to weasel out of this. There was a long silence. Mr. Lewis and I stared at Mr. Schneider until he finally cracked. I'm sorry. I did it. Did what? You're the one who robbed and hurt Miss Schneider, aren't you? I didn't mean to hurt her. But the lady wouldn't let go of the damn purse. Gun your, so you gun your bike and shoulder against the curb. Doesn't matter where or not you wanted to get her hurt. It's still, it's still as a, it's still assault, kid. You're the one who robbed and hurt Mrs. Okay, okay, sorry. My cell phone. So it was in the bushes, huh? I found it stuck between two branches. Actually, it wasn't easy to find. Stuck, huh? I thought I dropped it, so I looked around a bit. Then I heard the fuzz, so I took it off. I figured it wasn't there. I wanted to get my cell phone back. I didn't know the lady was in the hospital, so... I thought she had her cell phone. Uh, I didn't have cops bust in. Down on my door, so I figured they hadn't gotten their hands on it. I knew if the fuzz got their mitts on, it was all over for me. I had to get it back. <clears throat> yeah, I had it. It was in her purse. I kind of ended up with it. I thought as much. You answered the phone, didn't you? Yeah, I got the call from some kind of broad ones asking about a kid. That was you, huh? Looks like this is the end of the line for you, kid. I'll be back with an arrest warrant. Enjoy your last few minutes of freedom. Yeah, yeah. After interrogation, Malcolm was taken away by Mr. Lewis from the interrogation room. He told me to come back in a few hours, so I went out for a short lunch and then returned to the interrogation room. How about the kid? What is he gonna eat? <clears throat> Wasn't long before Mr. Lewis returned. Yeah, we just found Miss Kyra Snyder's purse in Malcolm's apartment. Really? Then, yeah, it looks like there's no doubt the woman was in the hospital. Is Kyla Snyder? Yes. We finally identified the victim. She's still in pretty serious condition. I figured something out. This case won't be under. They uh, won't be able until I we found Miss Snyder. The one who remembers who she is. Alright, good luck, Nuyla. Thank you. I hope your investigation goes well, too. Well, you just about solved it for ready for me. 
think you might ever consider joining the force, we could use a lady like you. I'll put in a good word for you. Ah, uh, well, if Mr. Anders start to cut in costs, I might be taking up on you on that offer. You, you so mean. No, I actually want to go out. <clears throat> Give me a warm smile. I remember you coming along, dear. Uh, you kn I know I'm supposed to be this kind of Snyder, but my name doesn't really bail. I see. Hmm. Maybe I should go get the kid. Uh huh. As I entered the office, happy server. Can I talk to you, Kurt? I need to come with me. There's a place we need to go. Sure, where are we going? Uh, we're going to visit your mom. Eh? You found her? I'll go, I'll go right now. Please, let's go now. Sure. Listen, Kurt. Your mom isn't feeling very good right now. If she says anything weird, be nice to her, okay? Of course, of course. He nodded vigorously, but I could tell he didn't understand what I meant. Poor Lenny. Sorry, we'll be out for a moment. How am I going back and forth so fast? I step into the hospital room. As Snyder turned to give me a smart smile. Oh, what a cute boy. Ouch. Do you recognize this boy? <coughs> eh? As I watched, Miss Snyder started in stared intently at her. I watched her just as closely looking at her any glimmer of recognition. Right? Oh no. Oh no no no. Kawawa little boy. Mom! Mom! I missed you. I really missed you. Kurt? That's me. You don't remember me? Uh, yes. I remember you. Oh yay! <clears throat> I remember everything now. Oh Kurt, I'm sorry I left you all alone. She wrapped her arms around Kurt on the top of them. And the two broke into their sobs. Oh, it felt good. That's his right. I'm glad she was able to get back her memory. Just with the kid. As I watched the two of them cry, I over uh, overjoyed to see one another again. I realized that my part in the case was over. What a relief. Kurt and his mother were finally returned and united. I must say, my dear, I was a little worried for what it looked like things weren't going to work out. I'm so glad everything worked out alright. I suppose that wraps up both of your cases, huh? Quite a yarn, wasn't it? I'm a little tired out. Oh, Kingsley. Have you forgotten already? Hey! Oh no! That! Yulia! You ever told me that habit at the burgers and tea shop yet? <laughs> <laughs> this isn't the end of the story, Mr. Kingsley. I don't know if I should be worried or excited. Just wait for it. You're enjoying this, aren't you? Why is it that Vincent got to be part of this case? Don't you think I could have helped? Ah, stop whining, old man. <laughs> we wrapped up our stories. How about we go over it again? Oh, maybe it's his story now. Hold on, my nose is running. Good for the internet to hear. <clears throat> Make sure you still got it all straight. <clears throat> Alright then. Save. Okay. Answer the questions. <clears throat> okay, oh man. First question is You're gonna make me add a pile of things. What was the piece of wood that was Kurt found in the garden? In the park. It's a picture frame. It's part of a frame of the stolen painting. That was... That was what you convinced you to... That the painting had been taken out of the house. <coughs> I was able to figure out where Nobuko had gone the night of the robbery. Where had she gone? Uh... No, that is Hano. Hano's bar. I was able to confirm Nuku's alibi, which only led to one possible conclusion. 
Edward had someone in the bank. I'm actually done. Edward's mother was... Money. He said it was for money. He said he chose that painting because it was his hardest favorite. Sounds like a stormy relationship. In the meantime, Yulia was tracing Kaya's movements on the day she disappeared. Yes, he has. I finally found the location where Mrs. Snyder was robbed. How long had I been visiting by the time I found it? Two days. I've also finally got to meet the victim of the robbery. But the victim was... And had an amnesia. When I visited the police department after visiting her, attacker had already been apprehended. His name was... Oh no! I actually forgot his name. Oh Marco. That man had Mrs. Snyder's purse. That was when you were able to positively identify Mr. Snyder. Oh, Mr. Kingsley, it looks like some... Oh god, no, no, no! No! Malcolm, okay. Okay, okay, okay. I'm sorry, I'm dumb ladies and gentlemen, I'm always dumb. No, I'm right! Oh no, it was this Hano's house! doing? Tony, you need the toilet. Can you check the battery? Wait, I checked the battery. Hmm. Say three days. Come on, this one will look okay. I regret you left almost left Kurt without a mother. Well, thanks to you, he was finally reunited with her mother, as well as his. Hey, but I didn't quite end there. Yes, what do you mean? Why? Yula, I have a favor to ask you. 
You heard I'd fallen asleep and Miss Snyder and I had begun talking. <clears throat> I don't mean to impulse, but if you could leave a message for someone at the antique shop, I would really appreciate it. And if you can, please don't tell Kurt. Is that because your message for, is for Edward Hablin? You knew! Yes. I heard about him from the owner of the antique shop. He's Kurt Father, isn't it? Yeah, if you know about him, please. How is he doing? Edward is, um... Oh god. Does he really need to learn about the Edward them? Try to hear the truth. They were both adults and I ordered to her not to sugarcoat the truth. Oh no. I told him not to do it. He knew about the whole thing? Ah, Yuya, please. Please stop Edward for me. But the case has already been solved. No! He's not done yet! Edward! He's bent on getting revenge on his father! Oh no, is there more to our cases than I thought? Avins and Kurt, this is hidden mysteries. The horrible truth of the Hablin family is about to reveal. Oh no. You look weird in that picture. Okay, I'm going to step this episode right here. So yeah. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it and you'd like to see more, just simply wave your one like a saucer and hit the like button and hit the subscribe button for more videos to come. Uh, yes, say bye bye. Until then, this dad are signing off.